The RISC 501 is a fire safety and assessment test for external cladding systems. Um, a, a building's typically split up into, uh, into internal fire compartments and the external cladding system can obviously bypass all of these um, internal compartments, allowing fire to spread around the entire building. So that's why it can be quite impactful if it's not made from appropriate materials. RISC 501 is developed to improve on concerns with the existing testing regime um, and also come at it from a different perspective, to come at it from an insurer's perspective, which is looking at property protection as well as life safety, so that people got a home to return to after a fire scenario and also reduce any damage to the building. And the key fundamental principle behind this is instead of looking at a rate of fire spread, it's looking for systems which are able to prevent fire spread to multiple floors. The test has been designed so that it can be conducted alongside BS8414, um, or it can be conducted as a standalone test, and so the criteria um, are, are developed so, so they can be um, tested at the same time. Um, it, but it differs in, in several ways. Um, it's, it's got much stricter construction criteria to ensure that the systems which are, which are fire tested better replicate the systems which are installed on real buildings, and, and also to ensure consistency between fire tests so that tests are more repeatable and results between cladding systems can be compared much better. Um, it, it's got much stricter temperature criteria. Uh, again, instead of looking for a, uh, a rate of fire spread, it's looking for systems that are able to prevent fire spread to multiple floors. So the uh, temperature sensors have been moved to, uh, to be able to monitor this, and the criteria has been changed to, to a number that's, that's more appropriate for, for identifying this sort of thing. Um, there's additional criteria in there as well, so there's criteria for mechanical performance. Um, a lot of our research showed that um, incidents where falling material interferes with firefighting operations can have a significant impact on, on life safety and obviously has an impact on property protection as well. Um, so we introduced some criteria based around um, firefighters and, uh, and systems which, which wouldn't impede firefighter operations. There's also gas sampling criteria. Um, smoke toxicity has been, been an emerging issue um, recently and uh, particularly some of the uh, fire retardants used in combustion insulation can produce some nasty gases like hydrogen chloride or hydrogen cyanide, which can incapacitate people um, and, and prevent them from, from escaping from the building or, or they can be lethal in, in their own right. And so we've introduced criteria for, for measuring and, and sampling. Um, there's no criteria set in terms of performance criteria for this, but it exists to enable a comparison between systems. Material characterization or, or material fingerprinting is, is a very important part of, of the test. There were Accusations in the Grenfell inquiry that manufacturers were supplying chemically different products to the fire tests um, to what was being installed on the building. Um, and this was for uh, lots of the major components installed on the cladding system all, all had accusations against them. Um, there are sort of three main reasons why products can differ uh, from a fire test to what's on the building. Um, the most concerning one is, is manufacturers could send in test specials, you know, a, a special chemically enhanced product off to a fire test that performs much better uh, during the test, um, but it's too expensive to mass produce and so a much cheaper, worse performing products installed on the building. But there are other reasons why it can vary as well. Uh, there can be sort of natural variants of the product, which is sort of tied into to poor specification. So there's not enough specification between behind the sort of tolerances of the product and, uh, and the auditing process behind the product. Um, then just, just through randomness, you can end up with products that are significantly different on a fire test to what goes on the building. Uh, and the last one I'll talk about is, is continuous improvement. Um, these products are continuously improved over time and small changes to the product don't, ne no, don't necessitate a, uh, a retest from, from, from the fire test. Um, but they can stack up over time and become a significant change, at which point the manufacturer is supposed to uh, go off and get it retested once it's become a significant change. Um, but when it's lots of small changes together, it's difficult to notice. Like I said, with sort of lack of auditing process behind it doesn't get identified by anyone else um, and that's uh, another reason why we can end up with significantly different products on a building to what's fire tested and that's why this material characterization um, method is, is really important because um, it's able to identify things like uh, the inclusion of more fire retardants, um, uh, a lack of other materials like combustible materials um, and also the extent of process reactions. Products like um, PIR insulation, polyisocyanurate, um, is, uh, is, is reliant on a lot of uh, the formation of isocyanurate rings, which are, which are very difficult to break down uh, and make the product uh, more resilient in a fire scenario. Um, but they're, they're expensive to produce, um, you know, either through uh, 
the heating that's required or the um, chemicals required to produce it. And we're able to, to identify the, uh, the, the amount of these and the ratio to other products in the material to see if there's more or less uh, of these. And uh, that goes for, for all process reactions as well. So it's very good at being able to spot changes, um, and which is obviously very important because of some of the concerns that have been raised in the past. So we conducted validation tests against RISC 501. Once we'd conducted all of our research and uh, produced draft versions of the test and assessment method. And the validation tests were to compare our predicted performance against the, uh, the actual performance in the test um, so that we had confidence that, uh, that the changes we were implementing were going to be appropriate. And we got some, some very promising results back. We had a much clearer distinction between combustible and non-combustible systems, which, which gave us the confidence that, uh, that by lowering the temperature criteria, we weren't going to incorrectly fail systems which weren't able to, uh, to, to spread fire. Um, so non-combustible systems have got no inherent ability for, for, for fire spread to multiple floors. And then we had similar results when we were looking at um, gas sampling. So we were able to clearly distinguish between uh, non-combustible and combustible systems, so systems which are producing lots of toxic gases versus those that aren't. And so it gave us confidence that the location we'd chosen, um, one floor above, above the fire load, uh, was an appropriate location and, and giving us results. And, and from that data, we were able to... Um, show examples of how it could be used in other ways, for example, predicting the fractional effective dose inside a building. So looking at uh, the amount of toxic gases produced by the system, how would that look when it went for a vent into a building and spread out in the building? Um, and what impact would that have on people? And we were able to, uh, to identify between systems which, which um, could produce a fractional effective dose for, for incapacitation, which would prevent people from, from evacuating the building. RISC 501 provides several benefits over a standard, um, standard BS8414 test. Um, it provides you with more confidence that the system that's been sent to the fire test is going to replicate that performance on a real building. And a lot of that's because of the construction criteria, which gives you the confidence that in a real fire scenario, the performance you're going to see is similar to, to what you've seen during the fire test. Um, it also gives you more confidence that the system's going to be able to resist fire spread to multiple floors because that's what all of the uh, background research has been based on, and that's, that's the aim of the test standard. Uh, it's going to give you more confidence in people's ability to evacuate during a fire scenario. That's because of the gas sampling and, and smoke toxicity, which allows you to compare cladding systems. Um, and, uh, and it gives the insurers more confidence as well, because it's been, it's been produced through, through the risk authority with insurer input, um, looking at the areas that insurers want to see. So it's going to give the insurers more confidence that the building is going to perform appropriately in a, in a fire scenario. Um, and if, if you do want to find more information about it, then uh, contact us at firetesting at the fba.co.uk.